Hey guys. Okay, so sorry, I'm back inside now. Um, the background on the wall, that's the, um, one of the walls, the closet door is like white or whatever, but one of the walls in the spare bedroom where um, obviously her stuff is, this is all her stuff, but um, my luggage and stuff, and I sleep in here. Anyways, so that's why the background's changed. It's getting too dark outside and my battery was dying. But, um, that's another thing that I struggle with with making videos is that her schedule is very different. Um, like I said, she's had cancer five times, breast cancer, and uh, had to lose one of her breasts and brain cancer a couple times. And so her schedule is just really, really different. And I, you know, I always feel kind of... Again, it's not a reflect. It has nothing to do with my friend. Nothing. It's just that feeling of feeling trapped. You know what I mean? Like I, I try to stay scarce when I am here. I'm gone a lot on the bike or on foot, but a lot on the bike. Well, a lot on foot too, but a lot more on the bike. And I've been putting the applications and this, that, and the other, and <clears throat> having interviews and stuff with all these like you know restaurants or whatever. And like I said, so far nothing has opened yet. Doesn't mean that something won't open. Something may open this week. Um, but again, then I deal with the fear that will I even be able to make it there? You know, will I get fired in the first week or will I get fired in week number two because it was thunderstorming and I didn't have a ride there or it was 10 o'clock at night when I was getting out of there and I couldn't make it home on a bike and so I'm stranded. I mean, I said, oh, just catch a ride. Okay, with who? I, I don't know anybody there. I already just explained earlier in these videos how alone I feel and me even saying the words that I feel alone will cause some people I know like family friends family members to be like oh well you know you shouldn't be isolating yourself it's not a matter of me isolating myself here's the deal and I am gonna get back into the Esther thing and some of the stuff that I've done some of the ideas that I've had when I've been down there trying to minister and witness to these Jews and give you show you guys a couple things but um, when I say isolated or feeling alone or whatever, I know that a lot of you are feeling the exact same way because we're scattered. We're scattered all over the place. Um, we're scattered all over the place, but and a lot of us have been called to like this end time stuff and trying to preach and trying to warn about the Lord's return. Sorry, I'm kind of messing with the lighting here. Um trying to warn about the Lord's return or whatever. Um, and a lot of us feel isolated and feel alone. And the reason for that is because a lot of our family and friends basically think that we've lost our mind. Um, certainly with everything I've been through for my faith, they definitely, you know, a lot of people look at me like I've lost my mind. And like I said earlier, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, um, just go back to your old, you know, life or just, I want you to get your old, I want you to get your life back or just go, go back to your old company or whatever. But it's just, it's not that easy. First and foremost, God definitely is not going to open up the doors. He's definitely not open. He's already closed the door for me to go back to my company. That's not going to happen. Okay. And he always leads me to passages about taking me out of Egypt, right? Getting me out of Egypt and out of the system, I guess, if you will, you know, This whole bank account thing, when I was at the hotel, I tried to use my card to pay for a room one night, to pay for the room one night, and the money was in there, so the card should have gone through. The card would not go through. So I called the bank, and I said, hey, I don't understand what's going on. My card's not going through, and I know for a fact that the funds are in there. I had enough money to pay for, like, one night at the hotel. And they said, well, we, several months ago, issued brand new cards for everybody because there was a breach in security. Okay. What do you mean there was a breach in security? They said, well, everybody's cards had to get taken. And um, we basically deleted or got rid of everybody's cards. So even if you were still carrying your same checking Visa card, just pitch it, cut it up, throw away. It no longer is active. It's no longer valid. It doesn't work. There was a breach in security amongst many, 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 many people with this bank or with different banks in the United States. And so we had to reissue new cards. Now, right before I got evicted in my apartment, I remember 
Thank God it was a blessing from God. I had gotten a letter in the mail from the bank with another card. But the reason why I didn't pay much attention to it was, A, I was getting ready to be evicted and I was stressed out of my mind. And B, I knew that my card didn't expire for a couple years anyways. So why would I spend a whole lot of time paying attention to a card that I didn't think I was going to need because my card, according to what my card said, was it shouldn't expire for a couple years. But fortunately, that card, that new card they issued, came to me right before I moved out, and so I was able to get that from my mailbox because I haven't been able to get my mail for months and months. I mean, who knows how much mail that has been sent to me that's gone back, um, that had gone to my old address I'm talking about, not the address of the friend where I'm staying at now which really nobody pretty much has this address but um but anyway um except I, I have put it on applications for these restaurants and stuff but that's pretty much it anyway I digress so they were like yeah there was a breach in security and I'm thinking this is this was several months ago at the hotel and I'm thinking okay that's just weird now interestingly enough when I made the phone call to the bank, at first the bank wouldn't come on the line. Instead, it was an automated recording. And the automated recording said something to the nature of this. Um, it has something to do with, like, making a call but nobody answering. You know that verse in the Bible where God says, I called but nobody answered? Um, and... That's kind of what's been happening with a lot of us for watching the end times and trying to warn people about Jesus' return. He said, when I called, nobody answered, you know. Um, well, when they told me there was a breach in security, interestingly enough, the number on the back, the security code on the back of my visa checking card at that time was 308. 308, March 8th, again, is the date that I that something very supernaturally significant happened to me on Purim. And I always knew that was prophetic. I always knew that tied in with something because I'm constantly seeing these, I'm constantly seeing things that give me confirmations about that and about this calling on my life. Do you guys remember, and if you don't remember, I, I encourage you, if you want to take the time, if you don't want to take the time, that's fine. If you just want to kind of skim through it, go back and watch that video I did about standing at the Red Sea, which was the last video that I uploaded. Again, it's not the last video I made. I've made several other videos, but I have just not been able to, they've not been uploading for some reason. I don't know if it's YouTube. I don't know if it's my uh, camera. I don't know what it is because I don't have a regular camera like the kind you hold. Like people vlog with the handheld cameras. I don't have that kind of a camera. I do, but... A, I don't really know how to use it, and B, it, like everything else, it's in my storage garages. But I, so I have like a, a webcam on my computer, and I have a detached webcam as well that I use that's, you know, a little bit better or whatever. But, um, I said that for a reason, now I don't remember why. Um, I thought it was interesting that they said there was a security breach and when I called last week and found out with the 800 number that my account had been closed it really just started to make me wonder if this was God's way of saying he didn't want me having an account at all now I'm not saying that's the case because the bottom line is I know for a fact that there are people that again should they be led to donate if somebody's led to donate they you know they donate through PayPal I have to have a bank account linked to my PayPal I don't know of any other way to get paid through PayPal other than having my bank account linked to it I'm sure there are other ways but it's probably a nightmare to have them it's probably a lot more of a nightmare because even having a bank change even having a bank account change with PayPal is a nightmare Anything with PayPal is a nightmare because you have to be on the phone with them for hours at a time. Nothing You can't just go in there and edit it and it's not a big deal. Like Everything's a pain in the rear end. But like I said, also, if anyone's led to give and it's somebody that I know and it's somebody that knows me better, it's somebody I've had conversations with, it's somebody that I trust, I would be willing to give out the address where I am. Um, and you'll know in your heart, you'll know in your spirits, but you'll know in your spirit if, if we're somebody that is close enough that I would give out my address to. And if you're not for sure if I would, just email me and, and ask me, and I would, you know, give out the address and just you, 
a check or cash or whatever. And again, I'm not asking anybody for anything. This is something I want to put out there. I'm not, I don't make my videos to make money. Okay? I'm going to, and I'm talking in a normal tone right now because my friend and her friends still weren't home yet from the women's meeting tonight at their church. Um, which, like I said, normally I would have gone, but I needed to work tonight and get these videos done and try to get them uploaded. But um, I think she just opened up the garage, so I may be talking quieter. But um, I'm not, it's not like, oh, I'm making videos to make money on the videos. Or if I do a teaching video or an encouragement video, or if I share a testimony about witnessing to a Jewish person in this town, or, um, you know, I'm doing it to get, no, I'm not. I'm not doing it to get money. I'm not doing it. I'm not asking for anything. I'm saying if you're somebody that's led, if God is leading you to help me, if God is leading you to help support me in this journey that I have been in for almost three years, because I never wanted to get on here and do these, I told you, I never even wanted to open up the Alabaster Box channel. Once I went through court for the custody battle over my son, you guys, most of you already know, I didn't really make videos anymore on my solo artist channel. I didn't make videos anymore. Okay? Because when you've been drugged through court and you've had all of your Facebook posts, and all of your YouTube videos thrown in your face, I mean, you have to stand there. You have to literally, with your attorney, go over, like, did you say this, Heather? Did you say that? Did you say Jesus was coming? Did you say the FEMA camps are real? Did you say this is that? You're, you're kind of like, you learn real quick, like, okay. And, and besides the fact, not only do you learn it from common sense, but you're being advised to back off. And this is what I mean when I say they have ways of trying to isolate you and trying to keep your keep you with a closed mouth so that you're not saying too much, so that you're not warning a certain ways or so that you're not exposing certain things or whatever. Now, I'm also funny about like in other words, I I you know, because of things I've been through and because of things the Lord's taught me, one thing about it is I know that none of us are perfect. We're all sinners saved by grace. And we all have to have mercy on everybody else in order for God to have mercy on us. So I'm also careful. Like some people, it seems like that's all they ever want to do is expose, expose, expose. But I'm not talking about exposing other people, uh, bringing bad light on a specific person. I'm saying in general, trying to warn people like these FEMA camps are real. The Illuminati is real. The Freemasonry. The Knights Templar. Um, everything that's coming out of Hollywood. Um... Uh, all the things that are happening around the world, all the things that are happening in Israel, the things that are happening in, in America. Um, these aren't me trying to like tear down some individual, but just more or less me trying to be a voice in the literal wilderness, because that's normally where I am, is on a bike in the wilderness. Okay? Saying, repent, prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus is coming. Make straight the path, you know, for the king. And... I can hear my friend laughing. She laughs really loud. So if you guys hear something in the background, I apologize. Um, anyways, make straight the way the king or whatever. Make straight, make straight the path. Well, I think I lost my train of thought. Um, I'm so sorry. She caused me to lose my train of thought here. I'm just saying that they've it's it's they've been good at kind of silencing me. And it's not silent not I don't mean silencing me as in I'm afraid to talk about the end times because I talk about the end times with people all of the time all the time. Even when I try to say I'm going to throw in the towel and forget this, I can't do this anymore, then God will still always open up some kind of a situation or some kind of a door where I end up talking about it. That doesn't mean in my flesh I still don't feel frustrated and stressed and upset and angry and resentful because I do. There are sometimes, actually there are often times where I feel like I don't know. I think I've just been through so much that I'm not really, uh, oftentimes I, I end up feeling extremely unappreciated and I'm looking at all these people that I've stuck my neck out for trying to warn people and again I still try to figure out why is it that I'm the one suffering and everybody else is still flourishing and passing me by as so though nothing's even changed in their life. And 
there are people that want to throw emotional stones my way and say, oh, so you're just doing this for what God can do for you. Give me a break. Give me a break. Er, that's the kind of stuff I will block. That's the kind of stuff I won't even deal with. I won't respond. I won't argue. I've learned. I won't argue. I won't respond. I won't say anything about it. I'm not going to um, go back and forth. I'm not going to debate about it. I'm just not going to talk about it, period. If somebody wants to throw those kinds of stones, they're not going to get an argument. They might get a little bit, you know, in our flesh, we sometimes want to respond, and we respond without thinking, or we respond quickly because we're angry, we're upset. But then, like, as soon as you have a few minutes to think about it, it's like, no, I'm not having this conversation. Okay? Because only God knows my heart. I mean, look at Job's life. Was Job just, like, only just looking for what God could do for him? No, man. When you've been suffering, 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 and sacrifice, one sacrifice after the other, and you've had everything taken from you and you constantly feel like you're being drugged through the mud and being humiliated and you're constantly at the mercy of everybody else I mean who can live like that forever nobody it's humiliating and this video is 18 I'm sorry 16 minutes I'm gonna stop this video and do another part because um I want to finish this off with something specific um, so I'll be back in the next video. Love you. Bye.